Okay, did you get the same things I did? Nitrate, NO3 minus. Nitrite, NO2 minus. Phosphate, PO4, 3 minus. And phosphite, PO3, 2 minus. Does that seem pretty obvious when they're sitting next to each other? Yeah. Is it easy to remember that phosphate's a 3 minus charge and it's got 4 oxygens and phosphite is 3 oxygens and it's a 3 minus, but sulfate's a 2 minus? No, it's not easy. It takes a lot of practice. And I really recommend that you keep those flashcards with you all the time. Have them in your pocket. You don't have to go through the whole stack. Just take a minute or two, go through five or six cards when you're standing in line waiting to pay for your lunch downstairs or you're at the bookstore or you're at the dentist office waiting. If you're in a carpool and it's not your day to drive, practice them. If you're driving with a chemistry student, practice back and forth. Do not do flashcards when you're driving by yourself, all right? I don't want you getting pulled over. Oh, and Master Peck told us to do this. No, don't do it when you're driving along. You could make a video of yourself saying them on a video and then play that video to talk to yourself while you're driving, but um, otherwise, otherwise not while you're driving. It'd be a great idea. Okay, now let's talk about some more ions. If an ion looks like one of the oxoacid ions, but it has one or two hydrogens in front of it, we add the word hydrogen or dihydrogen. We also sometimes use the uh, prefix bi to replace hydrogen. So we have the carbonate ion, CO3 2 minus. Now if we add a hydrogen ion to it, we get HCO3. You'll see that the hydrogen is added on the front and the charge goes down by one and we call that hydrogen carbonate. It's also called bicarbonate. You know this from your kitchen, sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, that's what it is, okay? That's the ion in there, and then a sodium ion. Phosphate, PO4, 3 minus. If we add a hydrogen, we get HPO4, 2 minus, and we call it the hydrogen phosphate ion. It's also called biphosphate. Then if we add two hydrogens, we get H2PO4 with a minus one, and we call that the dihydrogen phosphate ion. Now, according to these rules, you could call it dibiphosphate, but I've never heard anyone do that. Okay, I've never heard it called that. It's dihydrogen phosphate. So note that each time we add a hydrogen, the charge goes down by one on that ion. Now, there's a few ions that don't fit in anywhere. Um, these are polyatomic anions. Hydroxide, OH minus. Cyanide, CN minus. Azide, N3 minus. We've talked about that, right? You know where that is in your everyday life? Or we didn't talk about that in here. You, some of you experienced, well, you didn't experience it, I hope. Some of you were in close proximity to this ion today. Anybody know? It's in your car. car it's not the battery. The battery is sulfuric acid. The bag, the air bag, right? It's not an air bag, it's a nitrogen bag. Because it has in it, this ion, it has sodium azide. And this is a compound that is impact sensitive. When you crash your car, and it comes under impact, it spontaneously decomposes, and it gives you nitrogen gas, and it gives you sodium ions. Those sodium ions, sodium's an alkali metal, sodium ions react with the moisture in the air to make sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is Drano, liquid plumber, and oven cleaner, and it makes sodium hydroxide. Then it sprays that mist of sodium hydroxide all through that airbag as it's crashing into your face. So um, it will stop you from going through the windshield, but you have to be a little careful. Has anyone ever experienced an airbag deployed one? Thankfully, I have not. Did you get burned? Yeah, my arms were burned. Yeah, pretty severely. And they tell you to go home and take a shower? Yeah. Go shower right away, don't delay, because you've got sodium hydroxide in your hair, and... Um, so that's what the white mist and everything... Yeah, that's, that's what that is. Cassandra, when that happened to you, did you try to stop the airbag with your hands, do you think? No, I don't think so. It happened really quick. 
Yeah, you didn't have time. Oh, they were on the steering wheel, and the bag comes out between your arms, right? Yeah, I have some photos I'll show you. Um, I'll dig them out while you're looking to show you some of the burns. Um, okay, so how do we use these ions? Oh, and then peroxide is O2, 2 minus, and uh, amide, NH2 minus. If you're from England, you call this amide, but I call it amide. I'm not from that other side of the pond. Okay, so... <clears throat> How do we write formulas for compounds with polyatomic ions? The same way as monoatomic ions. We look at the ions, and then we make sure the charges are neutral on the compound. In order to do this, you have to know the names of those ions. So ferrous, that's iron 2. Sulfate, that's SO4, 2 minus. So I write ferrous sulfate, plus 2 minus 2. FeSO4. Ammonium, that's NH4 plus 1. Phosphate, PO4, 3 minus. Now I have to use parentheses to make this electrically neutral. Because the ammonium has a plus 1 charge, I need 3 of them, so that goes inside the parentheses, PO4. Potassium, that's an alkali metal, so it's a plus 1. Hydrogen sulfite. HSO3. Sulfite's a minus 2, so hydrogen sulfite's a minus 1 because I've added that hydrogen. So KHSO3. Mercury 2.